Welcome to the Ray Festival live in Bulgaria and online wherever you are in the world. I'm angry. This is not how, you know, what I thought. And also when I get surprised, it's like when I'm not informed correctly of what's going to be and what is happening and I get surprised, it's like, you know, I get really angry. So we want to be informed. We're actually creating the form, you know? creating the form so if i'm in the form in my form and i'm present i'm present in my you no know, solar plexus mainly because i'm an emotional manifester so i just stay here and you know this is going on and in the world but i'm i'm here i'm, I'm staying here and then the world pushes me or the universe pushes me out of out of my inner authority, my emotions, it's always, it's like I'm in the form and then from in the form, I can inform and put the form outside and make a form. This is manifesting. Hmm? <laughs> this is manifesting. And informing when it's correct, in my experience, it's always inspiration. It's never memory. It's not what I knew yesterday, so I'm talking about it. I have no idea what I'm going to say now. So when I'm speaking to you, I can, I'm kind of informing myself of what's happening. It's not like I know. I mean, I know because I'm an individual, but it's not a mental knowing. Yeah, It's just a state of knowing. I'm in a state of I know, or I'm in a state of, I don't know. That's my states. That's the states that I have. So I know, or I don't know. And I don't know is fine with me, you know. But when I know, it's an inspiration. An inspiration is being with the spirit, being with the breath, you know, respiration. Respiration brings inspiration. So if I'm breathing and I'm, you know, I'm breathing as to not, listen to my mind when it's telling me what to do because this is what everybody should be doing not listening to the mind when it's telling us what to do this is the practice of human design for me has been from day one so what do i do in life i don't listen to my mind when it tells me what to do that's the work yeah that's my job and i don't have to do it anymore because after doing it for many years it's just the state of being it's just natural that the mind speaks and i hear it and sometimes it's interesting and sometimes it's not but anyway it doesn't tell me what to do yeah and so nothing tells me what to do it's not that something else tells me what to do it's just that i moved when i moved and i watch it but when i moved it's it's initiation it's 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 this see how my body is moving it's this it's always calibrating and then one moment it goes you know and when it's inspiration and since i'm very I'm, I'm pure individual i only have individual channels and many individual gates then it can be empowering yeah, and empowering, you know, is a word that I really love in Hebrew. In Hebrew, empowering, ha'atzama, ha'atzama. And self is atzmi. Ha'atzama, for me, empowering means being more self. Ha'atzama, atzmi. And atzmi is also the same root of bones, atzamut. It's also the same letters. So, like, the more I am in my bones, I am more myself. That's empowerment. And then, and then this form can empower, you know, out of that it empowers. And each manifestor is different in that. So I'm a very individual manifestor, but you have tribal manifestors, you have collective manifestors. Some manifestors have uh, a lot of definition. I'm very open. I only have three centers, the solar plexus, the ajna, sorry, solar plexus, the throat, and the ajna, and only two channels, so very, you know, but some manifestors have many channels, 
it's more complex, right? Because there's more channels of uh, expression and those expressions. And this is for everyone, not, not only manifestors. When we have a lot of channels of expression, it's like, you know, it's different to have a TV with two channels or with 10 channels, right? Okay, so what what am I going to see? Yeah, What am I going to speak <laughs> now? And, and, and maybe one channel speaks the individuality and the other collective or tribal, it's like, you know, it can be a conflict. This is for everyone. But when it's manifestors and it's impacting, it can come back as, as you know, as a very confusing um world like world view i want to say because for me the impact comes back to us this is our view you know like dolphins or whales that they swim in the water and they make a noise and the noise comes back and then there's a picture for me this is how manifestors are so you know we we put something out and then it comes back as an impact and when it comes back as, as an impact there i am you know, if I say something and Isar goes, oh, I'm like, oh, nice. You know, <laughs> there's my impact coming back. So this is what it did. It's, And so if if there are, you know, more, more things coming out, yeah, like collective, tribal, individual, or it can be other themes in human design, and it comes back, it can kind of come back distorted, yeah? So the question of manifestors, who do I impact or what is my impact is because the impact comes back. This is how I know myself. Now, this was for manifest manifestors here. But if you, most of the people here are not manifestors and you know manifestors, then you understand if the manifestors in your life are not correct, this is what they might be experiencing. So their impact is coming back and it might be distorted um it might be not accurate you know and, and and then it's difficult for them they get angry because they don't get a a clear picture in a way of the world or of themselves so if the informing from outside is not happening correctly or if i'm as a manifest not not informing because i don't know i'm a manifestor and i don't know i need to inform or I'm not informing correctly, then the communication field is distorted, you know? And actually, manifestors, now that I say communication field, that's what we're all about because, you know, we are energy to the throat, you know? In bringing out the form from inside, outside, and then whatever comes back. So in a way, we're like a closed unit with this closed aura communicating with itself. And in the spiritual sense, for me, this is everyone. So everyone is a self communicating with itself, right? I'm speaking to you. You are my other selves outside here, you know, that. And it's true. In the spiritual sense, for me, it's true for everyone, but each one has the mechanics of how the self is communicating with itself through this specific form. Does that make sense? Okay. And so for manifestors, they're just uh, expression in a way because they just have, you know, a motor to the throat. I mean, they have more things, but what they are in the essence is, is you know, an energy to the throat. And so it's all about communicating. And communicating is something that can be very difficult for manifestors because we are closed. And manifestors, if they're not in human design, they, they have no clue that they are closed. Now, I remember the first reading I had and, and, and I was, you know, I was told, you know, people don't know what you feel, what you think, if you like them, if you want to, you know, talk to them. You're unavailable. And I was like, what? <laughs> yeah. I'm like, uh, the, you can see everything in my face. What do you mean? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I had no idea. It really surprised me. But 
but we don't know. I mean, everybody in their aura, you know, we don't know and, and until we start experimenting with the auras and then we really realize, you know, how how we're meant to move in the world with other human beings. And for manifestors, I remember, you know, always until human design, it was like an enigma for me, my communicating communication with the world. I could not understand, you know, do they like me? They don't like me. I am, I am I a part of the tribe or I'm not, you know, if sometimes I say something and they come after me and sometimes it seems like, they're not connecting with me. Do they love me? Do they not love me? Do I love them? Do I even want to be with them? I don't know. I remember the first immersion I had with Marianne. This was years ago. And I was already after a year and a half in my experiment. So really deep in the experiment. And it totally ruined my life already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. It's true. It was like, it was a mess. But I loved it. You know, I, I'm a mutation. So I was. I was mutated to the max. It wasn't my first mutation in life, but it was the biggest. And I came to the immersion and there was this, uh, the thing we do with the chair, right? So one person sitting on the chair and everybody's over there. And of course, I'm the manifester. So I had to go first. So I was first, Daphna, you're nodding because you were there, right? You remember that immersion? The first one in Israel. And I was sitting on the chair, eyes closed. And... Marianne said, okay, so someone is, is moving towards you. I said, okay. And then after like a few seconds, I started feeling like fire, you know? And I got so irritated. Yeah, it's in the body. So it's irritation, you know, this anger. I got irritated and I'm feeling this and it's, it's really strong. And I feel if I can say like a metaphor, like a dragon, you know, I know if I open my mouth now, I'm going to sh like, <laughs> yeah, everything gone. And I'm breathing. <sighs> Not to open my mouth and, uh, you know, and then I go like that. I go like that, you know, stop, stop walking towards me because Marianne said you can do that. So I was like, okay, stop. And I opened my eyes and there was Hunt, which is a friend. He was really cool. We like each other. He was four meters away. <laughs> I thought he was over here. You know, I was like, he was four meters away. I was shocked. I was shocked because I realized at that moment that this is how I live life amongst people. In the physical sense, I'm constantly irritated. You know? It's crazy. Yeah, and so I spend most of the time kind of by myself uh, for the last few years. I mean, I'm a, <laughs> I'm a perfect 5-1. I'm all over the place on the internet and, you know, whatever. But I'm in my, I'm in my space, in my house. Uh, with my reflected daughter, my generator uh, husband, my son comes sometimes, and he's a generator. His daughter comes sometimes, she's a projector. But most of the time, I'm like, I'm with myself. But that was really, that was really a shock to understand what anger is. And I call it rage. I don't call it anger. I call it rage because it's really like a dragon's fire, you know? And then it has nothing to do with the personal. It is never personal. It has nothing to do with my thinking process. It's not like I'm thinking I am angry. After I get irritated, my mind says, well, but it's not the other way around. It's not like my mind is saying something and then I get irritated. I get irritated and angry and then my mind puts a story on it. By the way, this is what happens anyway for everyone with emotions. And especially if you're emotional people, but also if you're non-emotional people, noticing that you don't believe the story that your mind puts on your emotions is a very good practice. Yeah? Because you have an emotion, energy in motion, and the mind goes da-da-da-da-da. And once you listen to your mind, you're out of your emotions. 
so you're out of yourself basically if you're uh emotional you're totally out of yourself and if you're not emotional then you can't just like be this openness that lets the emotion come in go out and just be who you are you know in your sacral or in your spleen or whatever So this is what anger is, and a lot of people don't understand because when you get anger, you don't you don't care what's happening to the other person. I mean, you just get, like my daughter says, well, mom is angry. <laughs> well, yeah, stop initiating with me, you know? I say it over and over and over again, but what to do? So, <laughs> you know, I inform all the time. And actually, that's what manifestors are meant to do because manifestors are educators because, you know, what is initiation? Initiation is bringing from the inside out something new, like a new movement, a new energy into the world. Now, if it's really new, who would know how to deal with it, right? I mean, if I'm bringing something new, nobody knows what to do with it. So who's going to educate them what to do with it? It has to be me, right? That's a problem. And even before human design, I always felt I have to educate people. And I was only always angry about it. Like, <laughs> why do I have to educate everyone? You know, like tell them how to be. I don't want to tell anyone how to be, you know? Like, I don't want anyone to tell me how to be. So I don't want to tell anyone else. But it's like they're asking for it because they don't know how to be. You know, I mean, with me, at least with me, they don't know how to be. Thank you for being with us on this journey at the Human Design Rave Festival 2024.